Hey guys, it's Anthony Fontana here. I'm a CPA with EA Tax Resolutions. And today we're going over a case study of an offering compromise that we got accepted. In this case, the taxpayer is single. He's got no dependents. He's an owner of an S-Corp. So we go over the 433B in addition to the 433A. He qualifies for the low income certificate. So he didn't have to pay the down payment with the offer or he didn't have to pay the $205 application fee. And this is a periodic payment offer. We didn't do the normal lump sum offer. We're gonna be going over all the forms that we filed, all the letters we got from the IRS and our objections to those. So if you're looking to learn a little bit more about this IRS offer and compromise, stay tuned. All right, so we're jumping right in here. Uh, these are the forms that we actually did file. This is the 433, that's where we're gonna start with. Uh, we're gonna go over everything that uh, we filed for him here, okay? So section one, 433, it's pretty basic. I'm not gonna go over that. It's all personal information. I think it's pretty self-explanatory there. Uh, section two here, he's an S-Corp owner. So as an S-Corp, the IRS mandates that you pay yourself a salary, which means you gotta get on a W-2 and write yourself a paycheck. So he is like an employee of his S-Corp. So his employer's name, that's his S-Corp, right? And this is kind of, everything else is pretty straightforward here. Personal assets. Uh, client really doesn't have much here. He just has a, a checking account is really all he has. So we just put the amount that was in his bank account when we filed the return or sorry, when we filed the offer, um, which was that 800 bucks. And then the IRS gives us that thousand dollars of like an allowance here for the offer. So really towards the offer, there's nothing in terms of Bank account, uh, he didn't have any stocks or bonds, right? Nothing here. Um, no virtual currency, no retirement account. Really doesn't have much at all. Nothing in insurance, uh, cash value of life insurance. So it's all zeros here. Does not own a home, so we don't fill this out. He does have one car, okay? This is an old car. It's got about 200,000 miles on it. Um, so we kind of just uh, estimated based off Kelly Blue Book the, the value of it. We got the right the 80% the IRS gives us here, and that's what we're gonna throw over here. Now, they also give us this other allowance of the 3,400 bucks. So the 2,000 minus, the, there's nothing left over in terms of value for this offer here. So um, let's see here. Doesn't have any collectible valuable items, nothing here. So towards the offer assets, there's nothing, okay? Uh, we don't fill out the self-employed because technically he is self-employed, but in terms of the IRS, he's an S corporation. So we do not fill out, he's not a sole proprietor, that's why. Okay, so we don't fill that part out. Um, and the business assets, again, this is for self-employed. Uh, we'll go over this part in the 433B because we had to fill that out because he is an S corp. Okay, so didn't fill this out, nothing there. It was all zeros, nothing for the business. Um, and then we have, let's see here, nope, not self-employed, so we didn't fill this out. Uh, he's got a salary from the business, right? The 1500 bucks, and that's what we're throwing in there. He doesn't get distributions from the S-Corp because as of now, the S-Corp isn't making money. And we do show that, uh, and I'll show that in a minute here, okay? So 1500 bucks a month is what he's getting. Um, and then the meat and potatoes of the offers right here, the monthly health, household expenses. So we're taking the standard here for where he's at and what he's paying currently in rent and utilities the standard for the operating cost of the car he doesn't have a payment on his car it's already paid off it's a very old car so we don't get anything there um and then he and then his current monthly taxes that he's paying with his paychecks that's really all he's getting so that you know 2200 bucks is a lot more than what he's actually making he's in he's underwater currently like he's living off of credit here he's not doing too hot so no monthly income no assets right right here the calculate the offer it would be zero the offer right so because he's got nothing so in this section we're just writing zeros okay um, section nine we kind of go through all these questions but none of these apply to him we sign this thing we tell the IRS hey we enclose the pay stubs bank accounts and the 656 so before we go to the 656, let's take a look at the 433B, which we have to fill out if we are an S-Corp, okay? And you'll see up here, it tells you, you gotta fill this out if you're a corporation, partnership, LLC, 
S Corp basically, um, or another type of LLC. But nonetheless, thought the information for his S Corp, for the most part, is pretty, pretty self-explanatory. We say, you know, a month uh, average gross monthly payroll, he's the only employee. So he's paying himself 1500 bucks. That's what that is. Frequency of tax deposits, he's um, getting paid twice a month. So they're withholding taxes twice a month out of his paychecks. That's what that is. You'll see a little bit later how this kind of threw the IRS off um, and kind of messed up our offer. But we'll come back to this a little bit later. He's not a federal contractor. Um, Right, we gave some information in terms of his bank accounts. So uh, what he's got for his business bank accounts here. He's got nothing else. He doesn't like the business doesn't own stocks, bonds, virtual currency, doesn't have notes receivable or uh, accounts receivable. He's on a cash basis accounting system here. Uh, business assets doesn't really own much with the business here. That's what all this is zero. Okay, um, so equity. Available equity and assets, right? The 1758. You'll see that number come into play in a bit, okay? But then we give uh, this is kind of like his P&L, the what he's monthly averaging in gross receipts and then expenses. So we just put the total amount of expenses down here because we attach a P&L when we file this that breaks down every category like this. Um, I like to do that because this is a very rough P&L in terms of like the categories they. Uh, provide here on the 656. So I actually give a nice P&L. It just looks nicer uh, also for the IRS. Okay, so after everything, he's got nothing left over. Okay, so the minimum offer, right, he's got that 1700 bucks in his business bank account and that's what we're putting as the offer. Okay, everything else, right, does not apply to him. So we're checking the box, no, and kind of go through those, sign this thing and say, hey, we're sending out that P&L, like I said, uh, six months of bank statements of the businesses and that 656. So without further ado, here is the 656 that we filled out. Okay, we say, yes, we tried the pre-qualifier tool online. Um, his information, pretty straightforward. The years that are in question here, right, that we're making the offer for, and as I explained earlier, we did the low income certificate. Basically, uh, since he's not making money at all, he's underwater like we saw on the 433A, he qualifies for this low income certificate. So we say basically because his adjusted gross income is equal or less than the amount shown below. So, right, uh, that's him. He's family of one. And we're in, the, we're in California here. So 30,000 is that and he's, he's way below that. So. Um, we qualify for this low income certificate um, and because we qualify for this, we don't have to pay the application fee of 205 or like a down payment with the offer, which is awesome. Okay, so there's that. We just check the box there. Uh, we're not doing an offer for any um, taxes for the business, so we don't fill this out. We're just doing an offer for his personal income tax. The reason for the offer, this is a doubt as to collectability. This is like the most common reason and doubt as collectability is because of that 433 that we filled out. He's got nothing in there in terms of a bottom line. Uh, so that's why we're doing the offer, okay? Uh, and then the payment terms, we did the periodic payment and you'll see here, normally you gotta make like a down payment, first monthly payment, you gotta put a payment in there and then you, know, you spread out what your offer is which is, you'll see that 1758 right there, which was from that business bank account, from the business bank account, sorry. Um, that's what that was, so that was our offer. And uh, we just spread that out over the 24 months, and then right, that $73 a month is what we're doing on the 15th of each month, uh, but nothing down because we qualify for the low income certificate. But if you see here, right, you must continue to make the, normally you make these periodic payments while the IRS is considering your offer. So you would be making these payments normally. But since we qualify for the low income certificate, right, we get it waived. So we don't have to make the monthly payments um, while they're considering the offer. So he actually didn't make any payments until everything kind of went through. Okay, so this is a six by six, everything else, uh, didn't apply to him. The reason, let's see here, right? Doubt it's collectability. So the IRS is saying, if we're in, in, unable to collect from you, how are you gonna make this payment uh, that you're offering? And what we say is he's gonna get it from friends and family. It's a loan, so he's gonna have to pay them back if we get this accepted, okay? Um, so there's that, we check the box saying, yep, we're making payments here. 
and we're going to be filing on time. So that's what those are saying. There's the terms of the offer. We sign it and sent it through. Well, this is what we got back after we sent the offer through. Okay, so they send me. I'm a power of attorney here. They send it to me. Um, you're required to make estimated tax payments, right? You must make a payment of that by this date for us to consider your offer. So if you remember, the business itself is not making any income. It's, it's losing money as well. So um, the only income he's getting is from the paychecks. And since he's getting a paycheck, he's having taxes withheld out of the paycheck. And those are our quote estimated tax payments. He doesn't actually have to make quarterly tax payments because the bottom line of the business is not making money. So we don't have to make those. So what I ended up doing is I contacted the offer examiner in charge here and I explained that to him and then I sent her a copy of the pay stub that he's been paying. It showed like a year to date on how much he's been paying in taxes uh, and she accepted that. After that, we got this. Okay, we got this this lovely letter from the IRS. They said, hey, based upon what we see, we determined that you have the ability to pay the liability in full within the time provided by the law. So they rejected our offer. And they're saying, yeah, take a look down low uh, for the reasons why. So I'll, obviously, we got to double check the IRS's work here. And we do. So we take a look at this is the assets, right? It, we'll see his checking. We'll see his car. Net equity towards the towards the offer is zero, correct, right? That's all from the 433A, correct. And then if we look at here, the income and expense table, right? This is where they got it wrong. I caught their error right here. Uh, so we know 1500 bucks is what he's making monthly, but they're saying, oh, the IRS says he makes 3000. I'm like, no, that's not right. And she's like, the offer examiner pointed here that look at, well, he's getting paid twice a month. You put it on the 433B. I'm like, no, read the box. It says tax deposits. That's not his actual income, right? If you see right next to it, it says that. And she was like, oh, okay. And then she ended up making the, sorry, the camera got cut out there. Uh, what I was saying is that the the off, the IRS did end up making the adjustment for 1500 bucks instead of the 3000 uh, that we see here. But nonetheless, we can learn a lot from this table here that the IRS gave us. You'll see the expenses that we claimed here they did change a little bit, right? The net allowed amount. Uh, and the reason for that is the standards changed for the food and the operating, let's see here, of the car, right? They just changed a little bit. Uh, but in her calculation here, this is where we can learn a lot, right? So we have the 3,000 of income, the expenses here, what's left over that 500 bucks. Now, if we take that 500 bucks down here, you'll see right there, that months of future income, that 115, I go over this in a separate video that I have, but nonetheless, this is the the latest CSED on the account, the collection statute expiration date. So what they'll do is the you know the disposable income that 500 bucks times what's left over on the statute, and that's what you're able to pay. This is right in their calculation, 64k, um, and they reject the offer because if you can pay the 64k and you only owe the 13 why would we accept an offer? So that's what they're doing here. Again, this is like, this is gold here for the offer and compromise, right? Getting those CSEDs uh, to determine if you qualify for the offer. Uh, so nonetheless, that's why they rejected the offer and saying here down low, like, you know, f you could probably pay this off in 25 months based on your $500 a month. But again, I got that adjustment changed because we caught the error here. Um, Iris made the change, um, and then next thing you know, we had to fill out an amended 656 here, right? We amended this thing, uh, filled out his information. Let's stay here, here we go. Filled out the information, tax periods involved, right? Low income certification, just like before, nothing with the business income, reason for the offer, doubt is collectability. Now we changed this. Um, oh, this also happened with the, the Iris. The Iris just said, it's 1700 bucks. Is there any way your your client would be willing to take $2,000? And I was like, you know what? I'll talk to the client. I talked to the client. I told him, like, let's stick to the 1700 bucks. I think we can get it. And the client's like, you know what? If they're just going to take the 2000 bucks, I'll take the 2000 bucks. I'm like, all right, if that's what you want to do. He's like, yeah, that's what I want to do. And, I, and, and he's like, is there any way we can just, like, pay this off instead of doing the payment plan anymore? And I said, 
Yeah, I can I can talk to the IRS and ask them. Um, so nonetheless, that's what we did. So we we switched from the periodic payment to the lump sum here, and that's what we did here. And you'll see that right. We made no initial payment, so it was two thousand dollars. And what you do here is you put the the lump the whatever remaining is you pay it within I should say five months of the offer is what this is right up to five payments. So um, that's what we did there. Um, yeah, and then next thing you know, right, we signed this thing, sent it back, and uh, we then got the offer accepted. So this is like our, our golden ticket from the IRS, right? Uh, your offer has been accepted. You no longer owe a whole bunch of tax. Um, you just have to make the offer payment is really what it is. It tells you the terms of the offer that you have to do down here. Um, but that's it. I hope you guys learned a lot from this video. Stay tuned, subscribe to my channel here, like my video. Uh, I will be making more of these videos as I get offers accepted um, and or rejected just to show you how this stuff works and kind of give you more tips to help you with your back taxes. Thanks so much, guys.